sounds like we got a lot of sound. I also have some coffee. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Every fellow velotropin filling their preordained slot <laughs> and enjoying it. <laughs> um, we will um, now continue with today's presentation. Um, after, I must admit, that was uh, one absolutely wonderful celebration. I liked the, uh, the event very much. Um, the cake was great. I was able to crash and sleep for a while afterwards. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> it was really delicious. I'm very happy that the cake was large enough that I was able to carve out the 64 sections of the side bank. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that everybody was able to share that piece of cake and got their little piece of the side bank <laughs> into their system. So I just wanted to acknowledge that that uh, also probably was the um, uh, most superb um, galactic birthday party that I ever had. <laughs> so I think that uh, that says something. So everyone, I hope, will have the opportunity to have um, such a galactic birthday party sometime in their life, <laughs> and that, uh, uh, and also be able to eat the side bank. <laughs> it's not enough to eat the rich. <laughs> you have to eat the side bank too. So we got up to the point today, uh, this morning, of the. A moment, uh, you know, describing the moment when the uh, 20 tablet revelation of the telectinon occurred and uh, reviewed the background of the relationship of the DNA to the electromagnetic field and uh, the unfolding of the vision of, of Earth ascending uh, in relationship to the unfolding of the law of time. Uh, in a nutshell, the purpose of the 20 tablets is to put the DNA into the 1320 frequency, okay? The DNA was discovered and, and has been operating in the 1260 frequency and for the correction of the deviation in time that uh, the DNA uh, has to be um, reharmonized or harmonized according to the 1320 timing frequency and again, that can only occur by following uh, the correct, uh, uh, by, by being in tune with a calendar that is biologically, cosmically correct cycle, the 28 days, 13 times a year. And <clears throat> also that through the further revelation of the telectonon and the revelation of the cube of the law, that this is truly what made possible then the revelation of the of the 20 tablets and also um, created the possibility of, of seeing how we were going to place the um, DNA uh, into the correct frequency. Uh -huh. The fuel, okay. Now, the, the key to the whole matter was this, the, the cube of the law, as we saw, has 16 positions, okay, which the four that correspond to the plane of mind, four to the plane of spirit, four to the plane of will, and the central four to the divine source, telectonon, and that in the first phase of the, telec of the telectonon process, each of those positions correspond to one quarter, one 13-week cycle. Now we're moving into what is called fractal time compression and uh, further unfolding <coughs> of the process in which the 16 cube positions equal 16 years. The, the realization I had at the moment of the, that evening of the red magnetic serpent on the 27th day of the rhythmic moon of the fourth year of prophecy was <clears throat> was this that 16 times 
52 equals 13 times 64. There's 64 codons, 52 weeks, 16 years, and I knew that each codon mathematically is, is a constitutes an absolutely perfect set of 13 permutations. Goes to a, 13, a cycle of 13 permutations. So 16 times 52 equals 13 times 64, which equals 832 weeks and equals exactly 832 codon permutations and permutations, there we are. And then um, I saw that beginning at that precise point of the, the Kin 44, the yellow overtone seed on, on July 26, 1997, through the day out of time, 2013, that there were exactly 832 weeks, okay, and that the six, so the 16, so that's 16 years, so each cube position then was going to equal one year, or the 16 cube positions would equal six, 16 years in all. I'll go over how all of that works, but that was when I saw that I had worked out some of that. I knew, I knew about the the codon permutations because uh, in, in Earth ascending on maps 38, 37, and 38, if you look at that uh, text, you'll see um, that there is a, the 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 codons are arranged uh, in their permutation sequences in in eight eight different blocks or sets, two, uh, four, uh, four blocks uh, uh, above, which constitute the AC, and four blocks of them below, which constitute the CA. But as I said, until we, until we had figured out um, the, the law of time, until we figured out that, how, that what it means to, uh, to uh, change the calendar and get in the, into the ter correct timing cycle, I did not know how all that could be put into the correct timing frequency, but when I saw what uh, what this this um, when I saw this particular equation or equivalence, then I knew that uh, we had an absolutely perfect sequence of time, precisely 16 years, precisely uh, 832 weeks, that took us precisely to the point of galactic synchronization. And so I saw that when when we said that the beginning with this year the fifth year of prophecy that the cube was to explode. This was the explosion of the cube, that the cube was now exploded into a whole 16-year sequence, which is called the 16-year cube of the law, and that every, every week that one of, these, one of these codon sequences would occur, there's six days, of, there's, there's each codon consists of six lines, and again, going back to the cubic structure, That, and then of course we have down here, you have um, six sides to the cube, and so I saw that each, each um, line of the codon would correspond to one side of the cube, and that over uh, the time of a week, during the first six days of the week, that you would build up the cube and the codon line by line. So, for instance, today we're at the, at the fifth line, We've, we've, we've gone one, two, three, four, five, this is alpha day, this is the fifth day of the 13 moon week, the fourth week of the planetary moon. So that means that we've created five sides of the cube. Tomorrow we'll complete the cube, the sixth side, which will be the final line of the cube. And then on the seventh day, that there's a particular process that occurs. When, again, remember that the, the cube has the six sides and then the seventh uh, factor is the, is the point at the center of the cube that holds the cube together. So 
that on the seventh day, then that we uh, meditate the whole codon. We are inside the cube, and and uh, that completes the process of creating the cube. So that every day, I saw that every day of the week, <laughs> for the next 832 weeks, starting July 26th, 1997, that every day of the week, where there will be a process of constructing one of the DNA codons, placing it in a cube, meditating it, and, and telepathically sending out that codon to the field of life, life the unitary phenomenon, so that then telepathically we could begin to reharmonize the DNA. The, re the point of, of placing it in the cube, as we said, the cube is the primal structure. That's the primal, when the, the, uh, according to the cosmology of time, the beginning of everything is in the cube. <laughs> And we saw, like, in, for instance, in the Russian science that confirms that the primary model of an atom is a cubic structure, and according to the law of time, this cubic structure is actually referred to as the primal cubic parton, and the primal cubic parton consists of the seven radial plasmas, which we know of as the seven seals of prophecy, which are the Dali, Seli, Gamma, Kali, Alpha, Limi, um, Celio, which are which then, as we'll see, will we be replacing the, the names of the days of the week. Okay, so this, as I said, this was all part of a very, very big flash that occurred to me. But before we go further into um, the unfolding of that process, um, we'll go back to a point in time during the first year of prophecy when... Uh, uh, in, in the rhythmic moon again, just before Christmas of, uh, of that, uh, or maybe just after Christmas, I think it was, that we were in Cuernavaca, Mexico, and, uh, which is not too far from Xochicalco, which is the archaeological site, the name of the archaeological site, which was actually where Quetzalcoatl went to school. <laughs> uh, this is... Quetzalcoatl's higher tech, <laughs> okay, where Xochicalco um, was a very interesting place. If you've been, had a chance to go there, you know what I mean. Uh, it, it uh, was uh, very active at the time, just after the end of the 10th Bakhtun and the beginning of the 11th Bakhtun. At the end of the 10th Bakhtun is when the, when the galactic Maya departed and left, left, the, left the scene, went back through the center of the earth uh, and interdimensionally um, departed. Uh, but the, some of them stayed behind and it was, that was a very important point throughout Mesoamerica that what corresponds to the year 830 AD. And that after that there are a number of very important um, cultural centers uh, not the least of them being the Mayan centers, but also uh, the Toltec areas of Teotihuacan and also uh, in, the, in Oaxaca, the Zapotec uh, uh, people. So the Zapotec, the, the, the Toltec uh, remnants of the, of the Teotihuacan civilization and uh, members of the Mayan, uh, galactic Maya who remained behind all gathered uh, at a place, this place called Xochicalco, uh, in the in the state of Morelos, not too far from uh, uh, from Cuernavaca, and that uh, it was at this place here where the where the young when the prophet Quetzalcoatl, who was who was known as Sea Catl Topilzin Quetzalcoatl, which means our Lord One Reed. Quetzalcoatl. Um, one read is the same as Magnetic Skywalker, same as Kin, Kin 53 uh, in, the, in the Dream Spell and in the Mayan uh, version of the Tzolkin. So it was here that the, the young Quetzalcoatl was taken so that he could receive all the knowledge that had been uh, accumulated or gathered uh, and kept by the people, by the by the Zapotecs, by the Maya, by the Toltecs, and uh, it was here that he received his education at at Xochicalco. You can see 
the <coughs> sculpture of the feathered serpent, the plumed serpent Quetzalcoatl. This is the rainbow version of that sculpture. And in, in this, it appears in this map here, map 38 in Earth Ascending, and this map here, you have actually all the 832 permutation sequences of the DNA codons. There's the sequence 1 to 8 is right here, sequence uh, 9 through 16 is right here, and then sequence uh, 17 through uh, 24, 25 through 32, 33 through 40, and 41 through 48 are all down below. As I said, this is the CA sequence. And then you, be, you return again up here. This is the sequence 49 through 56 and the sequence 57 through 64. So the AC sequences are up here and they're divided in, as you'll see, into four, uh, four AC sets. The prehistory set are these two. The, his, the, the set that corresponds to history are these four down here. And then the two post-history sets are, are those up there. The, <clears throat> the most famous sculpture at Xochicalco is this sculpture of the plumed serpent. Quetzalcoatl was foretold, and, and the, the whole complex of thought and religion in ancient Mexico really centers around um, the vision of Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent. You, you have a serpent, or a feathered serpent, as you see, you have a, a serpent uh, with feathers, a serpent that flies, and that's very connected, for instance, to like the Kundalini type of imagery, um, or images of uh, basically of wisdom, that the serpent is the reptile creature that crawls on the earth and then the bird is what flies in heaven. So the combination of those two images also is very alchemical type of, of image, union of opposites uh, type of image, but basically as the feathered serpent, okay, and then the serpent of course is also connected in terms of the of the um, iconography of the Tzolkin with, with, with Maldek, serpent is with Maldek. As I said, the astronomers have very unconsciously and cleverly called the largest asteroid part of Maldek Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> so there's, there's all of this uh, is very profound. Through well before um, the actual life of the historic or the prophet Quetzalcoatl, uh, the imagery of Quetzalcoatl was, is found throughout Teotihuacan and all of ancient Mesoamerica, throughout the Mayan sites. You can go to Palenque and other places and see the images of the uh, plumed serpent, sometimes the beautiful image arising from the burning of copal incense, and then the serpent arises, and then you'll very often see the uh, human head emerging from the jaws of the serpent as the image of the acquiring of wisdom. So all of this, uh, there was a whole kind of what you might call a, a mythic or theological matrix that had already been established um, and then uh, very precisely in a 50, in, a, in, the, in what's called the third heaven cycle. The, the, the cycle of 13 heavens began in 843, um, thir precisely 13 years after the, uh, after the close of the, of the 10th Bakhtun, precisely 13 years after, uh, after the close of that Bakhtun, then began the, the 1352-year cycles, the heaven cycles, and it was in the third of these cycles between 947 and 999 that uh, uh, Ket the historical Quetzalcoatl, who was born on the day one read, okay, um, so that was why his name was, was um, Se Akatl, which means one read, you know, Se Akatl, Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent, and Topiltzin means our Lord or our precious Lord, kind of like um, Rinpoche in Tibetan, type that type of honorific title. So um, he had a somewhat miraculous birth. He was born in Amatlan, which is also in the state of Morelos, not, not that far either from Xochicalco. And he was brought to, to, um, to Xochicalco for his education, and then from there he went and and uh, founded the city that is known today as Tula in the state of Hidalgo. If you go to Tula, um, you'll find uh, um, 
Mexican petroleum industry. <laughs> Pemex has a huge refinery there, so it's very unreal when you go to Tula and you, you see the, the large stone sculpture figures, the, the so-called Atlantis figures, and what are they looking at? They're looking at Pemex. They're waiting for Pemex to dissolve. <laughs> And then uh, I was here that uh, the whole mythic story of, of Quetzalcoatl takes place. Well, and then from there he went from Tula, then he went south and eventually ended up in Chichen Itza in 987. Uh, and it was a Chichen Itza. Chichen, he reopened Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza had been founded in, at the beginning of the 10th Bakhtun in the year 435. And old Chichen, as it's called, um, lasted precisely until the dedication of the tomb of Pakal Votan in, in 692, and then Chichen Itza was abandoned, and then uh, it, was, it was reopened in 987, exactly 1,000 years before the harmonic convergence. Okay, there's all these millennial points or, or dates in time. When we were in, in Amatlan, the birthplace of, of Quetzalcoatl, um, last summer, we were there for the millennium of Quetzalcoatl's departure. So all these things, are, as I said, everything is very um, precisely, precisely timed. So in, in any case, it was just after Christmas of the first year of prophecy uh, that we traveled to Xochicalco and uh, at Xochicalco, that you can go, there's an, a subterranean chamber. And so we were taken, this is the first time we'd gone into the subterranean chamber. And in, in the subterranean chamber, um, there's a little a spot where there's just a little um, aperture, a little opening. And uh, you can sit there and meditate beneath the opening, and then you can see this sh one little shaft of light <laughs> coming into this subterranean chamber. And we were sitting there in uh, meditation. A few of us had gone there that day. And as I, as I sat there, uh, I heard a voice. And the voice said, all of the star histories must be remembered. And I said, OK. And so we, we left, uh, we left that, that place. There was a very, uh, in, that was the one time I felt a very strong past life experience also when we walked out to the edge of uh, Xochicalco and I, rem I could remember being there with my dog <laughs> at this one spot. It was a very touching type of experience because I also knew that when Quetzalcoatl was being um, educated there that, that all the prophecies were given to him and that he, had, he, had, he was being entrusted with a very tremendous mission because this was as I said, this was in the third heaven cycle. It was after the departure of the galactic Maya, and uh, it was before the, the, the... He was responsible for what's called the initiation of the uh, Toltec Renaissance, which occurred then following his departure in 999. It said he departed on a raft of serpents, and he said, I will return on the, on the day sacred to my name. And, uh, uh, the day sacred to his name, one read, occurred in 1519, the very day that Hernan Cortez put his feet on Mexican soil. So that was the fulfillment of that part of the prophecy. And that, from that moment, which was Good Friday, 1519, 1519, from that moment, then it was the initiation of the nine hell cycles, which then were finally over on August 16th, 1987. So. That's part of that history, but I had this voice that said that all the star histories had to be remembered. And we got back to the house where we were staying in, in Cuernavaca, the house of Taineta Muhammad, which actually had been given to Taineta by her husband, um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And, and when we got back to the house, I wrote down, I remember I showed you the little book, the Codex Telectonon, which was a notebook I had. And I just scrawled in a corner of one page this little riddle and it was when I kept when I tuned into this thing about remembering the star histories um, I wrote the only, the only thing I could think of doing was I wrote this riddle which is Pakal Votan's riddle of the stone which is one central point grows one cosmic tree one cosmic earth 
sings one ancient voice. Sixteen star points, can you find them? Sixteen star fields, can you name them? Sixteen powers of outer form, can you define them? Sixteen crystal facets, can you contain them? One mystic altar within the mystic stone, telectonon. Six seers listen, while the seventh utters the name far distant starborn, bound by no god but the one whose name is beyond knowing. Four star quadrants define the map, four star crystals make one seer, four powers of nine define the time. The crystal prophecy is yours to own. By these great powers undo the mystery of the stone. I just wrote that down spontaneously and said, okay, that's what that is. <laughs> and I knew it had something to do with this message of remembering the star histories. So at this moment when I had this realization of the, the, the 16 times 52 equals 13 times 64, 832 perfect weeks, 832 codon permutations. The cycle for the reharmonization of the DNA is very clear. It's the 16-year cycle between uh, 1997 and 2013, July 26, of the synchronization dates of those years. Um, when that came to me then, I went back. I had, I had taken uh, that little verse uh, and in another notebook had written it out and had studied it and I began to think that it had to do 16, 16, 16, 16, of course that's 64 and the 16 is the cube and, and so I saw it had to do with the um, what I, as I said earlier, the quartering of the cube position so that each of the 16 cubes instead of being one quarter of a year each cube was the, was the whole year but the cube was then quartered so that each of those quarters represented 13 weeks, okay, so then I saw, okay, so that's how all the 832 um, weeks and all the 832 codon permutations are contained within the cube, uh, the cube of the law. Um, this was when I wrote, when the 16 tablets came, or the, the, the 20 tablets came, um, the, this is the original color um, version. This is there are four um, uh, four tablets that more or less explain what the whole process is, and then and then there's 16 tablets, one tablet for each year. This was the this is the uh, my, I had also after I'd done this verse, I also had gone back and 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 at the time of writing the prophecy, I had looked at the structure of the sarcophagus lid and I, I understood the underlying geometry of it and put down that geometry which actually divides the, uh, the sarcophagus lid into 16 parts and I saw that those 16 parts also seemed to have something to do with the cube of the law and then over here you see the actual gate of time that's the cube as it's quartered with what are what are referred to as the 64 Ur runes. On the other side of this tablet, that's the original where I wrote down the the riddle uh, of the uh, of the riddle of the stone, um, which you can see in its in its original form for the tablets. There, um, the this uh, turn it over again. The gate of this the the gate of time. Is the, is the important thing to consider here because you can see these are the 16 cube positions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Each one of these corresponds to one year. But you'll see what they have um, and then you'll see that it actually forms a gate. This is the gate of time. Okay? And that the, these ten, there's ten positions here, and then there's six positions here, and um, there's a very, very um, intricate and complex cosmology that's actually 
um, contained in this process. The, the, here you see this is the, actually the red dragon position, the white wind, the blue night, the yellow seed, and that then these correspond then to the 16 years. This is the first year, and then when you, by the time you get here, this is your, your 16th year uh, in the center. The, the vehicle, what you see here is in this form of the, of the, uh, the, ge the geometric structure that you see here of the tomb lid describes what is referred to as Pakal Votan's synchronometric um, time capsule or time vehicle. And uh, you can see that there's a large um, type of octahedral form here. And then, of course, in the center is, is the earth, which was the target of, of Pakal Votan's journey. Pakal Votan had a very long journey. <laughs> And it was very clear to me that for, for some time I had been also from time to time um, taking on the persona of someone called GM-108X. That uh, G GM is, is um, Galactic Messenger or Galactic uh, Mission. Um, 108 is the number of the of the galaxy, according to the, to um, the Arcturians of, of the Velotropa experimental section, and that uh, uh, it also I realized that this also referred to a very very uh, 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 a type of very very profound meditation or samadhi, uh, as it's referred to, and that uh, Pakal Votan had been able to maintain. Um, his mission through uh, in the fourth dimensional level by maintaining this samadhi, uh, which is the, the samadhi of Pakal Votan, and that uh, uh, through this that he was able to uh, travel through the different planets, collect information regarding the destruction of Maldek, the destruction of the civilization of Mars, and then finally at the point of the beginning of the... Of the uh, uh, great cycle of the 13 Bakhtuns was able to place his samadhi or his meditation in the center of the earth until the time came for the moment of his what we could call incarnation which occurred um, in the year 603 uh, of, the, of the Christian era and uh, he disincarnated in the year 683 he lived uh, 80 years and his life is divided into two cycles a 28-year cycle and a 52-year cycle. And it's very similar to the cycle of Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha uh, uh, has also had a 28-year cycle and a 52-year cycle at the age of 28. Uh, as Prince Siddhartha, <laughs> Lord Buddha uh, awoke to the worldly life and, uh, and understood and then went out on a... On a, on a uh, um, seven-year vision quest and then became enlightened at 35 but it was that point at when he was 28 that then the the life of the Buddha the journey of the Buddha began in the same in a similar way Pakal Votan the, uh, the cycle the first 28 years were from 603 to 631 and then uh, and this was the when he was being prepared for his for his um, rulership, we might say. He was the 11th um, in the dynasty of Palenque. And his rulership, again, was very precisely timed to be to occur between 631 and 683. In the uh, Mayan factor, you can read a little about that, why that was so precisely timed, because this was um, this was the between 631 and 683 was the uh, precisely the 73rd 52-year calendar round since 3113. That's the biomass constant number. And during that cycle, the there was a great synchronization. There was a synchronization of when that cycle began. 72 calendar rounds had be, had passed. 73 um, tune calendar round. The tune is the 360-day cycle. It's not the same as the 365-day cycle. 73 of those calendar rounds had passed. 72 uh, of the 52-year 365-day calendar rounds had passed. 
Um, 36 large Venus cycles of 104 years had occurred. It was a very, it was the most uh, synchronic moment in the entire 13 Bakhtun cycle. It was precisely why at this moment that Pakal Votan uh, took his power uh, at Palenque and he held that power for 52 years and then in 683 disincarnated the tomb was already established there, the vault was built, the pyramid was built above it, and then on 9.13.0.0.0 on the long count, the tomb was dedicated. The dates of the, of the numbers, again, are always symbolic. 9.13 also refers to the, to the nine hells and the 13 heavens. It also refers to the nine years between the disincarnation in 683 and the dedication of the tomb in 692 and the 13 refers to the 13 years between 830 and 843 that elapsed between the end of the 10th Bakhtun and the beginning of the cycle of the 13 heavens and the nine hells. So um, all, of, all of that was, was um, very clear to me. It was also very clear in this process that I had entered into um, the, the Samadhi of Pakal Bhutan during this period. Another name for that is the Samadhi um, 1352. 1352 is 104 times 13. 104 is the, the number of the, the Venus cycle, the conjunction of Venus cycles with two um, two calendar rounds. So every 50, every 104 years is a perfect conjunction of the Venus cycle with the, with the Tzolkan and the solar um, the Hob calendar cycles. Okay, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Please stay awake. <laughs> it's a nice warm afternoon. <laughs> um, but so all, all of that was, was quite quite clear to me. Um, but one other factor I should um, bring in here was, was that the, was what you see here on the gate of time, and that's the, what I referred to as the 64 Ur runes. Now the 64 Ur runes <coughs> were uh, presented to me in 1986, uh, just before I finished writing the uh, the Mayan factor, I had a, a student um, who came to me, a graduate student who came to me and said uh, he wanted to give me a manuscript. He said he he, he had co two copies of this manuscript that were given to him. This student received this manuscript in 1974, of course, in a UFO Society meeting in Ohio. <laughs> and he said that someone had come to the UFO Society meeting and uh, had uh, copies of the Spanish uh, language manuscript called Cosmic Science. And so for some reason or other, he said he would take the two copies. He didn't know what to do with them. He didn't read Spanish himself, this student. You can put that down again, that's good. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> he's, he came to me in 1986 and said that after he thought about it, he realized that I was supposed to be the other recipient of this manuscript. The, the, the one, the, the earlier copy he had already given to a Peruvian shaman named Eduardo Calderon. And it was very interesting because um, Independent of this knowledge, and even before I knew about this, um, I had I had uh, telepathic communication with with Calderon in 1984, and that I, I met Eduardo about two or three years later, and we confirmed the that we had been in telepathic communication, and then I found out why because he had also received this manuscript which I received in 1986. Um, it's a very interesting. Manuscript, and it was that, and, and this manuscript. I didn't know. Uh, I read it very, very eagerly, and I thought, well, you know, there's really something to this. It, it had a, a lot of information um, that made tremendous sense to me, uh, in, and it also included <coughs> at one at one point included a sequence of 
of uh, 48 runes, but the 48 runes were set in a uh, uh, were were set in a matrix of eight by eight. So the the final 16 uh, positions were blank. And I looked at that and I said, well. That's exactly, I said, that's exactly like the program that I was, that I was describing this morning, that, that you have in the Cybank matrix, you have a sequence that goes from 1 to 16, and then and the, in the upper part, and then below a sequence that goes from 17 through 48, and then the final 16 sequence goes from 49 to 64. And I said, oh, that must refer, the reason why this is blank is because it refers to the post-historic program, which goes from 40, from codon sequences 49 through 64. And I knew that instinctively, and I said, that's why this was given to me. I also saw that the only place that there was any uh, date to this manuscript was precisely right next to the blank part, <laughs> where these 16 blank codons were, and I saw the date, and the date on there was March 7th, 1970. And I, I looked at that date, and I said, boom, I know that date, because that date was exactly 10 days before the beginning of the first Whole Earth Festival, which I originated at the University of California, Davis. And I said, I knew exactly where I was on that date. I said, now I see why this manuscript was given to me because I, I knew exactly where I was at that date. I knew the significance of that date. I knew what happened 10 days later. And I also knew why the 16, uh, why those 16 blank spaces were there after the first 48 runes. And so I looked at those runes and the, the sequences of those runes there. Um, and I and immediately understood their logic and immediately put in the other 16 runes. It was, it was not, it was part of my semiconductor chip <laughs> going off. And it was, again, one of these very interestingly timed things, okay? So the little semiconductor vibrated and tss, there it was. Um, so, uh, so I had that information, I knew what that was, and these were the 16 post-historic runes and I knew exactly what they were. Those, when I had begun to, uh, then I saw what the core, how those runes related then to this. I said, okay, there's 64 codons. And in the, in the text of the cosmic science, it refers to these runes as being the, um, it referred to the runes as being the code for the um, uh, bioelectrical uh, behavior pattern. So I knew, well, that bioelectrical behavior pattern, that referred to the DNA. I knew that there's 64 DNA. So I understood then that each of, each of these runes was the fourth dimensional um, bioelectrical coordinating uh, sign or rune that coordinated uh, one each of the 64 DNA codons. And so then I was e able then to to correlate the 64 codons with the with the 64 runes, and of course they're presented in, in eight sequences of eight each. And the the rune well, this this is called the uh, the or tri the or rune um, triplet the rune triplet sequence because um, okay. For instance, the first set of runes The first set of runes looks like this, 
and I saw that all the runes had the same pattern. The second, the second sequence, for instance, looks like this. I saw that, every, uh, that, the, that there was a very specific pattern to, to each of these rune sequences. I saw that it goes one, two, three, and that the, uh, there was a presentation, and then there was a circling, and then there was a squaring, and then, then, then there is some type of transformation occurs. Sometimes it goes like this, as in this one, where the, where the cross then turns into this type of form here, uh, or this one here where it reverses, goes upside down, and then you have the same thing again. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then there was always a synthesis, what, what we call the binary synthesis at the end. Okay, and I saw, okay, this was a, a sequence, a, a sequence that coordinated se the sequences of the codons in a, into a master pattern, okay? I saw, for instance, then that this is the first codon, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. And then this was the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, the twelfth, the thirteenth, the fourteenth, and then the fifteenth, and the sixteenth. And so that there was a master coordination to the sequencing of the codons, which gives a, a much larger program to the overall, ever since keeping in mind that the codons, um, the DNA codons, uh, are the constituent elements of all of life as we know it on this planet. Okay, so that uh, the the uh, and we see them. You know, you can see them. Uh, they may have some order if you study the I Ching, for instance, the hexagrams, and you can see some order there. But this was then creating even a larger sequencing of order, and so I saw that these. Uh, were the what I referred to as the Ur runes, Ur universal recollection. Okay, and remember the 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 voice said we must remember we must remember the star histories. Well, the star history is already written inside of us. Okay, everything has been written in a book, <laughs> inscribed in a book already, and that as I said, we're happily filling our slots, listening to the professor right now, Dr. Arcturus is up at the board, <laughs> okay, and we're all giving him an ear. <laughs> that we're all in our slots listening to this, and that, that uh, since all of the, everything has been inscribed already, that that means that the star histories are written in us already, and the star histories are written in the DNA coding, and the unlocking of the DNA coding is to get to the master, uh, the master um, uh, code that informs and orders the different sequences. So, for instance, then, each one of these runes as, a, as the master coordinating um, uh, program, uh, each of these runes is then responsible for a permutation sequence of 13 codons, okay? So, and for instance, the, right now we have, uh, let's go to the rune, this, incidentally, then I saw that these create, there's, there's eight sequences like this. I saw, for instance, then, so, this is how then I could construct, I saw that the, uh, the sequences one through six were complete, but this, the seventh and eighth sequences were not complete. Those are the post-historic aboriginal continuity sequences. So, I looked at that and I could see then, that, for instance, the seventh sequence went like this. With the
with, the, with that. The, in other words, one, two, three, and then again, this is one, two, three again. This is the primary, this is called the primary sequence. The second one is called the transformed sequence. Okay? The, and then the final two are called the, the binary synthesis. So in this sequence here, the binary synthesis goes like this. So that this then is codes 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. And then likewise with the final sequence, which starts like this. until we get to okay so here this then is 57 58 and 59 okay this is the rune that codes the 13 permutations of this codon right down here okay I saw that this Whereas the first sequence, as I looked at it, I said that this sequence is called the way of the tree. Okay, it's the primary, the, the primary life structure. Okay, that maintains that maintains the oxygen and the life uh, in the biosphere. That's the way of the tree. And then the second one here, this one is referred to as the way of conduct. It's very interesting that the this, the the runes that you get at the end, the swastika, and what's often referred to as the Seal of Solomon or the Star of David, which appear at the at the end. This is the primary, and the conclusion of the uh, first sequence, the sequence of the tree, and the second, uh, this is the, the way of conduct, and it's very interesting how these symbols become distorted and perverted in the final um, hell cycle in 19, from 1935. Where, where Hitler used this to uh, create havoc for this, <laughs> okay, and uh, gave a very bad name to the swastika, which uh, e even now people will use that and, and as uh, as an anti-Semitic symbol. But there's intrinsically nothing anti-Semitic about it. And that was just because of the process of history that Hitler used that. During it as, the, as actually as the sign of the last hell cycle, okay. In 1935, uh, Hitler um, had completed his, his uh, takeover, and uh, the Reichstag, as it was called, was the new Reichstag was dedicated at the very beginning of the ninth hell cycle, at the very same time that the, that the 14th Dalai Lama was born, okay. So all that occurred at that point, and then, then he used this symbol to, to repress this symbol, okay? So, uh, but there's, there's, there's nothing intrinsically Jewish about this, like there's nothing intrinsically Nazi about this. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> that the, the process, but this all does have to do with the, uh, the distortion of the 1260 and the fact that the Velotropa 24.3, our beautiful planet, is the karmic garbage can of the experimental zone. <laughs> So <laughs> that uh, all, the, all the karma from the previous planets and uh, from the destroyed planets is kind of flushed down the drain here, <laughs> okay? And that we're at the bottom of the cesspool and all the, all the different distortions and so on that have occurred um, have come to, uh, to characterize the, the final stage of what we call the cycle of history, where we are now at the end of history. This is the end time, the end of 1260 time. This is, this is where we are here. So in any case, this is, this is the Ur rune that, and that uh, conforms and that, that, that uh, coordinates the 13 sequences of the codon that we're going through now. Each, each for the, since uh, it became very clear that that the 20 tablets were giving us an opportunity to absolutely not only um, harmonize the DNA, but also 
to redo the whole program of history. <laughs> so that the first, in other words, like the, the, if you have 16 years, then you have, it's divided into two eight-year cycles. And the first eight-year cycle uh, completely redoes the AC, the Aboriginal continuity, both the, this is the prehistory, as, as well as the post-history. And so that for this year, for instance, this is the first quarter, this is the second quarter, this is the third quarter, and this is the fourth quarter, okay? And so um, this is 1997-98, this is 1998-99, and this is 1999-2000, okay? So that's the... Um, this is the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter. And each of these con coordinates 13 weeks, and which also correspond then to the complete permutation cycle, the 13-stage permutation cycle of each of these codons. Okay, I'm just going over the process, okay, so you can see how all of this was arrived at. That when you look at those 20 tablets, which are out there, you have the black and white. Um, version out there. Unfortunately, the correct color version has not yet um, been created, but the, the black and white is enough to um, allow you to work with. So this, this sequence is the way of the tree. This sequence is the way of conduct. The whole first eight years from 1997 through 2005 is defined as the eight years of the way of conduct and then the second eight years, the second eight years is when we go through the sequences 17 through 48. The second, the second eight years are defined as the way of wielding power because in the program that is that we must first, because remember we're dealing with moral deviation, we first have to establish what is the correct way of conduct and only well, only once we have established a correct way of conduct, which is totally dependent on returning to the correct timing frequency and establishing the possibility of, of universal telepathy. Once we have established the correct way of conduct, then we can enter into what's called the way of wielding power. And the way of wielding power is totally dependent then on the way of conduct. And the way of wielding power is how each person wields power, not how, how you give your power to someone and say, now you can wield your power for me, okay, and we'll put you in the White House, <laughs> and you can show us how you use the power I've given you. <laughs> no, that's all going, going, to be, going to be erased, <laughs> okay, absolutely. I, I remember when, when we, after we went and did the presented the 20 tablets in Costa Rica. We went to Japan and spent four moons in Japan uh, preparing for the World Congress on, on the Law of Time. And the Judgment Day Tribunal it was very interesting because in uh, uh, the, the, the Judgment Day Tribunal goes over the, the crime of the Vatican from 1452 to 1582, and that was a two-day process, and then the next four days was the, the World Congress on the Law of Time, which basically um, establishes the 20 tablets of, of the Law of Time as the new dispensation of knowledge to correct for the error that was created and institutionalized by the crime that was committed by the Vatican between 1452 and 1582. And I remember during that time in Tokyo, when you go to parts of Tokyo, Shinjuku, if you've been to Tokyo at all, Shinjuku is the, is the new city, and uh, in Shinjuku, you, when you get out of the, the subway and you walk up on the street <laughs> from Shinjuku, it's one of those places where you, you're looking at two or three giant screens, it's very futuristic, very Blade Runner type of places, huge, huge, you know, screens, you know, ads for Sony, but, but uh, I remember we'd get out every day, and we'd get out and we'd look up there, and there there would be always running ads for, what was that movie, um, Independence Day? And you'd be sitting there seeing 
three stories high, the White House blowing up. <laughs> I said, hmm, that's a pretty good image. And I said, we're going to erase all that. We don't have to do it that violently. <laughs> but that was definitely the vision. <laughs> that We don't need that. We don't need to put people, give our power away to people so that they can go there and we can watch how they abuse our power or turn her away when, when they're doing things that we shouldn't be looking at. Um, Anyway, that's something of a digression. <laughs> Digressions are inevitable part of this process as well. I hope it's informative. <laughs> We're talking about the way of wielding power. I won't lose my point. I drank my Bilbo Ginkgo gin gin Bilboa tea this morning, so I'm not going to lose my point, okay? <laughs> that we're talking about the way of wielding power, and that's for each individual to wield the power. So everyone, if you want, you can be in your own White House, <laughs> or, we, we, or what we call be in your own Ur Dome and experience your power uh, in, that, in that way, that we all share power equally. So the second eight years is dependent upon the completion of the first eight years, which is the way of conduct, and the second eight years, and the second, um, and the last four rune sequences then have to do with the way of wielding power and where um, the ace, where the, the second uh, eight years with these rune sequences, whereas uh, historically um, this was, these ran the sequences which were called the CA, the Civilizational Advance uh, in the new dispensation of the 20 tablets of the law of time, the CA is referred to as cosmic awareness. So we establish, we reestablish again the aboriginal continuity, which is like actually like the harmonization of the primary strand of the DNA. And then once we've once we've harmonized the primary strand of the DNA, then we harmonize the secondary strand of the DNA. And so the aboriginal continuity is the base for cosmic awareness. So that. This in this way, then we'll be going into from from the cosmic unconscious to the cosmic conscious in the cosmic awareness. Then we're we're living uh, in the cosmology in which we've transcended the linear model of time, and so uh, we are understanding and living in the in the cosmological model of time, which is absolutely now centered and the absolutely now centered model of time, there's nothing but cosmic awareness. You're not limited by fear of the future or hang-ups from the past, <laughs> okay, which completely limit our consciousness and create psychiatrist couches and things like that. <laughs> but we don't need that stuff. We don't, like, we don't need the White House. We don't need psychiatrist couches <laughs> that, uh, uh, because the, the, when we when we take our power, when we live correctly in the natural cycles of time, then we will be we will be self empowered. I mean, this is a you know it's a great vision. <laughs> That's what I think most of us actually want. And most everybody feels is right, <laughs> um, uh, or this is actually the normal cosmic way. <laughs> okay, and then but this all then again depends. Goes back to this point here, and depends and are getting out of the 1260 trap, okay, of, of breaking, breaking the vicious cycle of 1260 time, which actually means the getting back to the point of revolution, which, as I said, when I, looked, when I did the, the Earth Ascending and I saw, well, when we go, historically we go from 48, from codon 48 to codon 49, the revolution. When does the revolution occur? When does the revolution begin? When do we cross the corpus callosum from history into post-history? And you see here, um, in the very first year, okay, in other words, this, this sequence, vertical sequence here, represents the, the first year of the 16 tablets of the Law of Time. This, the first quarter was right here, the, the, the genesis of the tree, the second quarter was here, was the, the, the conduct and discipline, okay? And then the, the, and the third quarter, right here, you see, was code on 49. So that showed that actually when we've made that crossing, when we, when the, when the, in the Psi Bank, when the crossing to, into 
post history and the actual uh, uh, engendering of the revolution in time occurred then at the beginning of the third quarter of the overtone seed year, which was on the, on the resonant moon 15, uh, which occurred on January 24th of 1998. That it was at that point there where the precise moment where we had crossed into the post-historical process occurred. And so, as we know, we really are in post-history. The, there's a delayed time reaction in the 1260 world. <laughs> Uh, to this process because the institutions are governed by entropy and, and they won't give up until they're withered <laughs> by the overwhelming power of telepathic 1320 mental frequency withering them and that's what we're all here for to wither the institutions wither them down we don't have to blast them like an independence day <laughs> we'll just wither them <laughs> down okay so there's just dissolve them, okay? And then in that way, um, then, then the rest of the world will catch up with us. We're, we're in post-history. Everyone who's really committed to this program that we're doing here, everyone who's really committed to, to understanding and following the law of time, everyone who's really committed to every day saying, no, um, uh, it's not really April 29th, it's the... It's the 26th day of the planetary moon okay? and that's the first thing that you connect with and not what day it is on the Gregorian calendar and then from there go to the other levels that's the first level of commitment then you started the, you've entered post history you've, you've entered the post historical cycle and you are in the post historical wave and then if you are really committed to understanding then how the rest of the life process is coordinated by following this um, calendar, then you're contributing to this 1320 time wave, which, uh, which as we said, as it, as it grows over the next four years, we will absolutely wither all the old institutions because now we have critical mass. We have critical mass of telepathically intelligent human beings who are evolving into becoming biosolar telepaths. We have critical mass of people who are well-intentioned to do that and who are intelligent uh, in Russia and in Japan and in Europe and now in North America and throughout Latin America. And we need to spread that, but we have enough to set the time wave rolling so that we can begin to wither and dissolve those institutions at their foundations and get out the safety nets for the fallout. <laughs> Say, yeah, we're over here. Take a calendar. Um, we got a garden. If you want to start a garden, we got to get those gardens going, okay? We have to do we have to get the gardens going, and we have to get the caravans going. So you get the caravans going and start going to these communities and say, hey, didn't you hear? You probably thought something was going to happen on January 1st with that famous white Y2K thing, if anyone remembers that, but you got gypped, you got cheated. <laughs> they lied, they held on to the stock market, they held on to the institutions, they held on to all their lies and deceits, and nothing changed. But that's just a deception. Haven't you heard? This is post history. Here's your post historic calendar. <laughs> Start a community, create a garden, get out of the system. <laughs> Stop contributing to the uh, multinational structures that foster globalization, that destroys, that's intent on destroying your biosphere. I mean, it's just very, very simple and direct. Okay. This is the greatest wave of peaceful revolution in all of history because it's the post-historic wave. We got to get there, okay? So it's going to happen, and it is happening, but this is just... Some words from our sponsor. <laughs> so, here we are, and just showing you how those structures work. The, so that's, that's the meaning, as you see on your black and whites of, of these. That, that's how those sequences work. You can follow, um, and it goes back to the riddle. The riddle says, 16 star points, can you find them? 
the, the star points refer to the in the in the first eight years the star points refer to the this sequence right there right there 16 star fields can you name them that refers to this sequence right here the second sequence okay uh, 16 powers of outer form can you define them that refers to these right there okay and then um, the 16 crystal facets can you contain them that refers to the fourth quarter sequence okay that you see in each of those so here we are this is the where, this is where we are right now in the gate of time okay we're building a fourth dimensional gate in the gate of time we're in this in this quadrant of this third position right there and that's and we're creating this 13 weeks I guess that's why Raoul's crystal facets keep showing up <laughs> because this this the fourth quarter is the creation uh, where we're finding one of the 16 crystal facets this 13 week cycle is the is the third crystal facet that we've established since the 16 uh, year cycle began down down here so um, the that's that's then next next to in terms of understanding this whole process the, you have further information regarding the gate of time okay the gate of time which is the is the interdimensional gate that we are building so we can pass through that gate into the next evolutionary stage okay. that you see here that you see the dragon see that dragon right there that's the dragon genesis because we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay ten positions there the dragon genesis in the dream spell consists of ten wave spells okay so this is where the principle of fractal time compression comes in each year we have a planetary service wave spell okay, which consists of 13 moons and in the in the law the 20 tablets of the law of time uh, through fractal time compression through fractal time compression then um, those planetary service wave spells then also um, are one of the dream spell genesis wave spells so in in the planetary service wave spell each unit is one moon at the same time in terms of the dream spell genesis each unit is both one moon and 100 years okay so that the dream spell genesis began at uh, something like uh, 20 2387 minus 2387 according to the dream spell count so we're right now um in this current moon <laughs> we're in the 100 year cycle that corresponds to a time some 20,000 years ago in the past so we're also that's why I say we're also redoing the whole of the cycle of the dream spell genesis we're also reliving okay redoing or having the opportunity to tune into and to um, uh, go in back into that point in time what were you doing in 20,000 BC huh I bet you we were all sitting around in a dream and maybe we're saying, uh, will we be ready? You know, it says in the Arcturus probe, you know, they leave off the time travelers. And they say it, uh, it's a, at the beginning of the final 26,000 year Pleiadian cycle, the time travelers are uh, uh, deposited here, incarnated here on planet Earth, at least 144,000 of them. And they say, see you in 26,000 years. <laughs> okay uh, but when we pick you up again just do us a favor leave it cleaner than you found it okay that means we got less than 13 years to clean it up okay we can do it because we'll have the telepathic means to do it but 20 20 23,000 years ago 20,000 BC what were you doing what were we doing probably we're all sitting there in, in our little domes 
dreaming the same dream. Saying, hey, okay, we know we're going to have a long haul. <laughs> we got to get through the dragon genesis, okay? And then after that, we have to get through the monkey genesis. And we know this is the experimental zone. And then that's when it's going to get heavy. <laughs> And then how many of us are going to be around to remember this dream? How, how many of us are going to be around to wake up at the same time in the middle of the dream to remember that we dreamed this already? We dreamed that it would be like this already. How many of us are going to remember that? Is that why we're all here now together? We have to tune in like that, say, so what were we doing then? What was it like? Tune into the dream time. Tune into the dream time and get ready then to uh, move into the natural time and realize that we are all doing this together, that we're all dreaming this together. Okay, that's why we're all gathered here. It doesn't matter how old we are, who we are, what color we are where we came from, what language we speak. We're all here together, dreaming the same dream at this very moment. And this is the dream we were dreaming back then, that we would have to get to this point. And we say, boy, we're going to get to this point, <laughs> and we're going to have to wake up together. And we're going to have to say, wow, mercy me. <laughs> Not too much time. We've got to clean up this place, huh? I saw that there uh, there was a parade in honor of Chernobyl the other day in, in in Russia there, and it was a huge parade. I said, "Hey, let's close this down." Okay, there's enough people who want to to do this. There's enough people who want to say, "Hey." We don't want to do that the same day they're having that parade. Someone else in Japan died from the nuclear accident they had last fall. And who, who wants those nuclear plants? It's not you or me, I don't think. So why do we have them? How are we going to close them down? Who's going to identify the people who are making the guns? Who's going to identify those places? Who's going to go there with banners of peace and say, hey, Stop that crap. What do you think you're doing? Let's just close that down. We have better things to do. We have to be able to do that. We have to create this time wave where we know that it is our responsibility to stop the machine, to close down those horrible places. If we need to have cars for a little while more, hey, let's have electric cars. <laughs> we got clean energy things. We need to get around a little more like that. Do that. When do we start? Well, we start right now. We're waking up in a dream. This is a dream we're having together. This is, this is the meaning of coming together like this, so we can do this. We have tools, we have instruments. This helps us get us through. This gives us focal points that we can, that we can um, hold on to and go through this. So we see that, that then it, it takes 10 years, it takes us 10 years to go through this whole cycle of the dragon genesis. And then when we get to the year 20, 07, 20, from this, the last six years, from 2007 to 2013, remembering always that we're counting from the July 26th synchronization date. So then we, th these six years, we go through the whole monkey genesis. Okay, so we complete that cycle. Okay, so then when we get done, when, it's, when we get done with this whole process of 2013, we've redone the whole dragon genesis, we've redone the whole monkey Genesis, and then we get to have that moment that we got cheated of in 3113 <laughs> when we enter the Green Central Castle, the Emerald City of Oz, gleaming in super hyper psychedelic technicolor, <laughs> galactic synchronization. So, in here you see again the 
double terminated crystal form, which is part of the mystery of the stone. What is the stone? What is the mystery of the stone? Part of the mystery of the stone is who rolled away the stone from the grave. The grave of Jesus and the grave of Pakal Votan, okay? Who, who rolled that stone away? And then what is the mystic stone? in the mystic altar of the stone, and what is Camelot, and what is Shambhala, and what is Tolan, and when do we get there? So the mystery of the stone is the penetration of the mystery of death. We, we are actually um, immortal in the sense that our consciousness is not dependent upon our body. Uh, we've been led to believe that that, that our consciousness, our ego, is just nothing but our body, and so we deprive ourselves of immortality and, and accept insurance companies instead. <laughs> and what, what good does it do? You end up, your body gets up and as un, ends up in the grave or gets cremated anyway. <laughs> so the mystery of the stone says that when we get to this point, that we will be, we will be there, where we can enter into the understanding, true understanding, that we are not our body, that our body is an instrument that allows us to access certain information, and we haven't even used our body properly to access the kind of information we can access because we got stuck in the flat world, in the flat universe. And when we get out of the flat world and out of the flat universe, then we'll understand that our body is an instrument to access very different kind of information, that the purpose of the body is very different than what we think it is now. Right now the purpose of the body is to learn how to drive a car to get to work. But that's not the purpose of this body. The purpose of the body is very different. It has sense organs, and that's the key. This future revolution is referred to as the hyper-organic evolution. So that's one of the tablets. This is actually the third tablet, which also has on the back the Earth Wizard's roadmap. And the, the, here we're dealing with um, the evolutionary stage that we will become Earth Wizards. So Earth Wizards have to start someplace. So, so the, the Earth Wizards begins with this very knowledge, the knowledge of the law of time. Earth wizards begin with the knowledge that you actually could find that little calendar and start to follow that and actually begin to change your frequency and then from that that you could actually apply further discipline to really understand the law of time and see the different ways in which you can um, access the different levels of information. So. The, the, in the 20 tablets, the, the different, there are different levels of time compression, as I said, where, um, you, know, where uh, one, you can experience a kin in one, as one day, you can experience a kin as, as a moon, you can experience a kin as a year, you can experience a kin as a, as a, um, as a hundred years. For instance, today, kin 11, if we look, um, on the chronograph, on, on the 16, uh, there's four tablets that explain the, the, the cube of the law, and then there's 16 tablets that uh, define each one of the years. And the 16 tablets, each, each tablet, the front side of each tablet is referred to as the chronograph. And for instance, if we, on the chronograph, we look at where was Kin 11, it's in the first stage in the first wave spell of the dragon Genesis, and so we see that Ken 11 was a, uh, where we are was, a, was the um, 11th century <laughs> of the 26,000 year cycle. That's way back there. We were just, you know, saying, move the ice away, I want to make a better bed. <laughs> that cave over there looks pretty good, let's go in there and continue the dream. <laughs> let's do Let's do a dance and, uh, and uh, find a mastodon. <laughs> That'll help us a lot. <laughs> That's what we're doing back in the original 
Ken 11, I know. So you can locate yourself in the day, one of the ways of, is the daily chronograph from Ken 2, from Ken 1 to 208. You can follow and say, okay, that's where we are today, tomorrow, Ken 12 will be right there. And then the day after that, when we complete this um, seven day seminary, Ken 13, that's going to be the last century of the first wave spell of the dragon Genesis. It's also going to be one kin, this kin right here is one day, so one day or 100 years. This is what is referred to as the process of fractal time compression and the purpose is to begin to tune, tune into these um, different levels. Um, the, just go over a few more of these things. The, here's, yeah. This was, as I mentioned when, we, when I was first beginning at the, at the inception of the 20 tablets, I was working on um, my understanding of the Quetzalcoatl project, which, was the, which is also a function of what's referred to as the Arcturus Protectorate of Planet Earth. And so um, the 20 tablets is a function also then of the, of the entire 26 years of the harmonic convergence. At this point here, we have um, three years of approaching peace, and then we have entrance into the belly of the beast, which is the um, which is the G7 takeover of planetary affairs, uh, the creation of GATT and the WTO and all of that. And then right here in 1997, at the fifth at the beginning of the fifth year of prophecy. Then we have the beginning of the mind shift. The mind shift is the, the, the creation of the uh, foundation of the time wave, which will be initiating uh, uh, this in two days, okay? <laughs> that we'll be really uh, triggering, we'll be uh, actually using ourselves here to actually trigger this time wave, which then um, will get us up to the point where we get to the Circumpolar Rainbow Bridge. Uh, these first three years of the 16 years of the Cube of the Law are, are um, referred to as the three years of the New Genesis. The New Genesis is the genesis of the new human community that understands the law of time and is following the 13 moon calendar. Then following, following that then we have the 13 years of the second creation where we are applying these tools to um, harmonically rearrange the synchronic order, that is to say to harmonically rearrange the DNA, to harmonize it, and also then, um, also then to work at eliminating um, all the forms of toxic waste, at cleaning up the planet. That's the main, the main job, if we have to have jobs. <laughs> The main job that we have is how do we actually clean up the planet? And the purpose of the tools of the law of time is to give us the telepathic powers to actually interact with the atomic molecular structure to either dissolve the toxic waste or to uh, create permutations of the molecular structure that transform or transmute the, the toxic waste. This is very much like um, process of principles of alchemy, but this is, what, this is what, why we need to establish very strong education that's based in the law of time. This is why we have to get this to the children. This is why we really have to reach the children. I read in the newspaper here that uh, 22% of these people in high school in Oregon are going to drop out <laughs> this year. That's a large percent because they're really bored. And it's also interesting that that population, you know, um, that who are going to drop out, that the, of course 5.6% of, of that uh, of, of those dropouts are going to be Asian, 5.7% are going to be white people. Um, 11% 11 are black people, 14% are, are Native Americans, and 15% are Latinos, Hispanic people. Okay, so that also shows you 
the inherent racism and the effects of that. But what are we going to do with all those kids that don't want to finish school? Who's going to go find them and say, did you know about this? Who's going to keep them from falling into um, a worse states of, of despair? Okay, yes, we have to go out and work, work with these people. Let's go find them. We, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. And the human resources are there, and they're falling by the wayside every day because the 1260 kills. It, it kills if you don't go with it, it kills, and if you do go with it, it kills your soul. So what, you made a billion dollars on the stock market. When the stock market crashes, you have no resources what to do with yourself. So the 1260 kills any way you look at it. It kills if you're affluent and it kills if you're poor. So there's a lot of work to be done. The, this is what the 16-year program looks like from the point of view of the Arcturus Protectorate. This is called the construction of the fourth dimensional time ship. It's contained within the Arcturus Protectorate. These, hold that a minute, thank you. This, these are the three years of the second, of the new genesis, and then here are the 13 years of the second creation. This is the circumpolar rainbow bridge experiment right here, which then engenders the whole, the whole process of the second creation, new heaven and new earth. Yeah. That when we, we have a, we have a four year cycle from 2000 through two, up to middle of 2004, which is very, very critical for this, for, every, for everything that we're doing here, it's that, that this is the time when we're going to wither those institutions so that when we reach this point here, when we begin the seven years of the mystery of the stone, that which is like the seven years of prophecy, only this is the, the, uh, the actual evolution of the spirit from matter, it's the seven years of the mystery of the stone, that when we get there, that that the the whole earth is just going is going to be in 1320 frequency. We won't have that 1260. People, and when we get to the stage here, um, the midpoint here, we this is where we have the shift from the AC to the from the Aboriginal continuity. The groundwork has been laid, and then we'll have a really big flip right here when we go into the eight years of cosmic awareness. And incidentally, that this point here, which is in the year 2007, that completes, excuse me, 2005, um, then we get up to this point two years later, and then we complete the whole cycle of the supernova, 1987A. It will have discharged all of its information, and we should be rapidly evolving bio-solar telepaths at that point. So when we have the last two years, that is when we actually will be experiencing what is known as heaven on earth, okay, from 2011 to the 2013. That's, that is when we, we should have the conversion process. So we're looking for us, for us what, what it looks like is a big cycle of conversion, social conversion, conversion, harmonization of the DNA, development of telepathic techniques for the conversion of the toxic waste, the radioactivity, where we actually then are developing um, powers that make us quote unquote like gods. Right? And then we'll be ready then for the um, galactic synchronization point, which is the uh, what Vernadsky refers to as the entrance into the next geological era, which is, which is called the psychozoic era. Um, one other of the tablets of the four uh, tablets here describes again the function of the Uruns uh, and the coordination of the Uruns both in terms of their functions in the you know, hold that again thank you um, in the gate of time it shows all the different relationships and the functions of the Uruns in the gate of time and also shows the uh, placement of the Urunes in the in the Psi Bank. So, uh, and then on the other side, 
we have a description then of the different sequences. This is the way of the tree, the way of conduct. This is the AC, and this is the, the, um, the AC is these two here, and these two here, and then the CA is in here. So what the 20 tablets allows us to do is to organize the ACE, the, the, the prehistoric, and as well as the post-historic uh, AC, and then uh, through, through an eight-year process, the way of the tree, the way of conduct, the way of the telepath and the way of the galactic octave, the fourth quarter, the star, the star crystal of the first eight years defines the way of the galactic octave where we are resonating with the information that resonates, um, that, that comes to us from the Hunab Ku, from the galactic order. And when we're done, the first eight years, we create the structure of what's called the, the AC, planetary Manitou, and the second eight years we create the structure that's called the CA planetary Manitou, and the plan this, this is the um, the guiding the super mind of the planet, or the super soul of the planet as I said, we're here right now to begin to wake up the soul of the earth that that's, that's what we're here to do because we're just, remember, we're just galactic microbes <laughs> trying to create a colony <laughs> that unifies the biosphere of the Earth through a telepathic structure that is known as the noosphere. And the, but as a, as a galactic microbe colony, we're really a function of the awakening of the soul of the Earth. And that's, that's what, the, um, what our function here is. Um, I'm going through this somewhat randomly, but I presented some things that I did want to go over the 13 permutation sequence so that we understand how that works and how the codon is cubed and no, no, no we'll just, we're almost, we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, you go. I, I just wanted to wake us up a little bit more again and just say in terms of our personal discipline, what you're hearing over these seven days is a very large context. And when you keep in mind this context, it should awaken in you how important it is to just do a daily discipline. And so as we're doing this, I want to remind everyone that we have something called the Earth Wizard's Almanac. And we can actually use this to coordinate the synchronic order every day as a personal discipline. And it's a way that you put in sequence the planetary kin for the day. You put the radion sequence, the Dali, Seli, Gamma, Kali, Alpha, Limi, Celio. And then in the bottom section, you have the place to build the codon and to put the line in each day. And in this way, this is like an anchor in the present moment. And then you're free to go to your study each day in a way that doesn't confuse you. It's, this came up because I saw how, you know, you look through the book and you try and find where we are. The only way you can really approach this material is to take it every day. Absolutely every day you open and do the best you can. And in this way, then you're not abusing this knowledge by being a hypocrite. I want to remind us again, there are three categories. There are believers, there are disbelievers who wouldn't even be here or touch this at all. And then there are hypocrites. Now what it means to be a hypocrite is to pretend that you know all this already and not do the daily practice. And I really have to ask us all to look inside very deeply and profoundly and to see if we're acting hip in a way of hypocrisy, which I sometimes do if I forget my daily practice. And so I only say, and especially in this United States, it appears that we've been so trained to not know, to think that we should act like we know all the time we have a very hard time going back to galactic kindergarten. So let's try and empty our cup one more time, be in galactic kindergarten, and do the codon. Good. Now back to galactic kindergarten. Another voice, another announcement from our sponsor. Okay. <laughs> I, want to, I wanted to go over how this 13 permutation sequence works for any codon. For instance, this, we're, we're this week we're starting, this is codon 59 which and every codon consists of two uh, triplet structures called trigrams in the 
I Ching, we refer to them as triplet structures. And the permutation process, which is absolute for every single codon, works like this. You have this, the first position is the statement of the codon, and then the second you begin the transformation. And the transformation just begins by changing the line into its opposite. Okay, so here in this, in the, in the, in this stage here, the bottom line is a yin line, so it changes into a yang line. Okay? And so then you have this codon that's created, which I believe is number 61, for instance. Then on the, in the next stage, the next line is changed. Okay? So now instead of, so now you have um, the opposite of this codon, of this triplet over here, and then that, uh, the top part remains the same. So you keep going through that so that then in the, in the fourth stage, let's see, did I do that right? Not right there. Okay, is that correct? No, no, I got it right, yeah. On the second line, I changed that on there, that on there, right? Then here, okay? There we go. So that in the fourth stage, it looks like that. In the fifth stage, it looks like this. In the, I missed something someplace, correct? This line here, broken, no. Right here, right there. Okay, is that correct? No, that's not correct. Right here. No, no, that should be a line like that too, right? Okay. See, even I now where's my ginkgo bilboa tea? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is what so here we changed we oh that's what I did. Right here. Got it. Okay. Then we go like that and then this one goes like this and it's still like that. Got it. Okay. So this this line here changes into its opposite, and then this line here changes into its opposite. And then when you get to this, that line here changes into its opposite. So then you have this structure in the fourth stage. And then over here, the... It goes like that, right? And then... Okay. So then when you get to this stage here, one, two, it doesn't seem right either. See? <laughs> this one goes like that. Okay. All right, here. Go back to here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To uh oh. Now I'm all confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. That this no that ha this has to that goes like that. Oh, right here, right here. Okay, that one there. Okay, okay, okay. And then this one goes. This one changes to this. Okay, and then up here. Oh, that's still like that. Got it. Then that one changes here. Now see. Come, come up here. I'm obviously at the end of my day. <laughs> okay, you've got it straight. Okay, yeah. Okay, see? Okay, there. There. See, she's got, she's got it together. Okay. I see. Yeah, see? Now you know what it feels like. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, four. Fourth stage. Okay. No, keep going. Okay, now. Now, yang. Okay, and then, yay. Okay. Okay, fifth stage. Okay. Now the fourth line goes young. Yay! Okay, sixth stage. <laughs> we'll get there, see? Okay. Yin, yang, yang, yin, 
Yang, and then the seventh stage, it's absolutely opposite of what it was, okay? Yang, Yin, Yin, all right, okay, now we're not done, eighth stage, eighth stage, let's see if we can keep it together now, the eighth stage. Yang, and then Yang, Yin, Yin. Ninth stage is tenth stage. Now we're rolling. Okay, I had to have a comeback. Okay, I was just God. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got that. That. Yin, and then eleventh stage. Now we're rolling. They're not going to stop me They're laughing behind my back that I got it wrong. <laughs> they say 12th stage. Uh-oh. Keep it together, brother. There you go. <laughs> and then 13th stage. Back to where we began. God. Okay. See? Okay, so you see how, how every, every single one of these goes like this. When you, get, when you get to the seventh stage, you're always absolutely opposite of what your first and your thirteenth is. And so, in this way, that this, this is the first week of this quarter, okay, of this thirteen, uh, the, of this quarter, of this thirteen-week quarter. And then when we get to the last week of this quarter, so be between the 22nd and the 28th days of the cosmic moon will be dissolving again. I think I got to dissolve now. <laughs> okay. We got that far. <laughs> we got that far. And so then um, the other part then uh, which is, is is building what's called building the building the code on which is I mentioned each day and the, the this week for instance the first day this is the first day of the week, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. Today is the fifth day, so we've created five lines. We've created the, we start, we create the bottom of the cube on the first day, on the second day, this side, on the third day, this side here. On the fourth day, we create the back side. On the fifth day, we create the front. And on the sixth day, we create the top. Okay? Whew, boy. Oh, you got to yeah. What a deal, huh? And then, hey, hey, not quite yet. We're not, <laughs> we're not through. We didn't finish. We didn't finish. <laughs> On the seventh day, God doesn't rest. He meditates a rune. <laughs> okay? So the rune for this, for this whole 13 weeks was this right here. The dissolving rune was this square that with the with the circle and the dot in the center so when we get to the seventh day every week okay it's the same thing for this for this whole quarter because this is the rune that coordinates this whole sequence that's the master rune that coordinates the whole sequence of this codon throughout all its permutations so on the seventh day and you are in the middle of that cube and in the middle of your heart chakra and your heart center is that rune okay ta -ta 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 -ta. Try to make it pretty. Okay. Okay. And your you that rune is there. This rune is a um, light violet color. So you're radiating this light violet light of this rune through that through that cube, which has this code on um, the the bottom yin line there, the the yang line here, a yin line here, a yin line in back, a yang line in front, and a yang line in top, with that rune in the center. We'll go and do that in two days when we, when we finish this off, okay? But that's, that's the final process. So you do that every, every week, and that's what we do for, we've been doing that now for um, how many weeks? Hey, who's a mathematician? Who's got a head that's left on their shoulders to figure that out? Huh? Traces? No, no, for the whole 16 years we've done, I know, but 52 weeks, 104 weeks, which, 
Which week is this? Okay. 52 weeks, 100, 144. Is this week 144? Hey, give that man, I don't know if he wants a cigar, but something like that, okay? <laughs> this is week 144. Yeah. And we've had 40 weeks this year. That's, that's right. That man is absolutely correct. This is the 40th week of this year. And we've had 52 weeks the previous year, 52 weeks the year before that. 104 plus 40 is 144 weeks. That man is correct. This is the 144th week of the 16-year cube of the law. No wonder we're here. <laughs> Man, oh man, the magic number. <laughs> uh, this is, how come we're not in a game show? <laughs> guess that week, guess that code on. <laughs> Win a free telepathic trip to your favorite toxic waste dump and dissolve it. <laughs> That's the kind of game show we need. Well, very good. This has been quite a blast. <laughs> that was a pretty pickle. I was in there for a moment, but thank God I regained my cool. <laughs> and uh, we got through showing how that sequence works and how, how that works. I know some of you are doing, but doing it already, but it never, never hurts to be refreshed, especially when you see the teacher getting unstrung, okay? But... We pulled out, thanks to Bolo Nick and all of you and the inspiration that we've all had here today. Um, as, as we said, this is a very vast program and it, it, as, as Bolo Nick said, you just do it every day, okay? And that's why we, we have the Earth Wizards Almanac, which, which is what every galactic kindergartner needs so they can keep track because not right now we've entered the stage where if you are really with the program we are actually at this moment all um, practicing chrononautics okay chrononautics is, is navigation in time and we're all budding chrononauts yeah good you've got a blank page yeah Make copies, yeah, yeah, don't write on it. Make copies and then write on it, okay, and do some practice runs if you haven't done it before. But this is how you um, coordinate the, the different stages of what we're involved in, the, the daily kin, the site chrono units, something called the solar biotelepathic strands, there's 16 of those every year. Um, every year, you, every, every quarter, obviously, you create 13 of these, Okay, and so every year you create 52 of these, or whenever you started for that year, you've got that many um, that you've that you've done. And then on the day out of time, on the day out, of, when you these are called gathering your star bundles. Okay, this has all your actually coded information of the star histories, so they're referred to as star bundles. And then. Um, on the day out of time, you go to some nice um, place and have a, a polite star bundle burning ceremony because this is all in you. This is just practice stuff. You don't, you don't make a work of art out of this. You're the work of art. And the burning of these things at the end of the year is a very, very great test for your ego <laughs> and for even better test for your non-ego <laughs> because it's all inside of you. This is just to, to, to get the imprinting of this program going to get you in the cycle to get you um, in the frequency of things well I think that's enough for today okay we'll have another day tomorrow obviously God willing and uh, we'll go to the next stage of things we'll review some of we'll, we'll review a little bit of, of this again tomorrow and then when we get to the day after tomorrow, when we culminate, then we'll, be, we'll have the big meditation and we'll get the time wave rolling, okay? We'll, we'll uh, participate in the first stage of the Nawi Olin prophecy on the final day of this program and uh, uh, get, get that whole uh, process off the ground. Okay, well, do you have anything more to say? Just go galactic, 144th 
week that we've been doing this, so it's not bad. <laughs> it's great. And, and just how, how important humor is. We really just show you, I mean, the way you survive when you receive such information is to keep your sense of humor. And that's the best way to dissolve your ego. So don't forget to laugh with each other. And especially you have to laugh at yourself when your ego gets thick. 